So the transferability of the bee path to various urban environments and cultures will be best presented by the cities themselves with their own stories. So we will have here representatives and project promoters of the last four associated cities, and they will now share the experience and vision of their results. And we will welcome them using the words of the mayor of Bansko, Bulgaria. This is what he had to say on the matter. We are honored to be a partner in the BPathNet Reloaded project, which aims to support urban beekeeping. The entire Europe is facing challenges in this sector and concrete actions needs to be taken uh, needs to be taken to tackle the growing problems and Bansko is no exception. Young people play a key role in our society as mind changers in a way and we must encourage them to play an active role in improving the quality of life and increasing the prosperity of our society. The Bee Path Net Reloaded project shows the public the need to live in harmony with the natural environment and to involved in taking care and protecting this biological maintaining a healthy ecosystem. And now I'd like to invite to the stage Mr. Ivan Kado, who will tell us more about the Bansko Bee Path. Hello, dear friends. I would like to convey to you a warm greetings from the mayor of Sunny Bansko, Mr. Ivan Kadev, and uh, his team. The participation of Bansko in this project is particularly important since our city is uh, developing as all season tourist destination. And it is important for us to work for the protection of nature and the provision of a clean, healthy and safe environment. I personally congratulate the leaders and the participants of the project for the good organization and uh, the good cooperation between us. Many friendships were made, business contacts were established, and you made people and business look and think differently about the nature around us. In Bansku, the beat path generated high interest among school students, which made the school principals ambitious to include lessons on beekeeping and environmental protection in extracurricular activities. We believe that by educating and teaching children to treat nature with the necessary respect and care, we ensure a clean and healthy living environment for the future, an indicator of which are the beings around us. Thank you once again to everyone for the good cooperation and I wish you many more successfully implemented projects. And what uh, happens on the beat path in Bansko, you will see in the next video. Здравейте. Аз съм Иван Кадев, кмет на община Банско в област Благоевград, Република България. Град Банско е разположен в подножието на величествената Пирин планина, обграден с високи върхове и кристални езера. Районът предлага изключително богата флора и фауна, съвкупност от всички форми на живот, неповторимо биологично разнообразие и забележителни природни образования. За мен е чест, че сме партньор в проект Пътят на пчелите, чиято цел е да подкрепи градското пчеларство. Цяла Европа е изправена пред предизвикателствата в сектора, за това е необходимо да бъдат предприяти конкретни действия и мерки за разрешаване на увеличаващите се проблеми и Банско не прави изключение. Бих искал да подчертая, че община Банско провежда целенасочена политика за повишаване осведомеността за значението на пчелите в живота на хората. Чрез участието ни в процеса на трансфер на добри практики успяхме да създадем и реализираме образователна програма. 
Ежегодно разширяваме зелените зони на територията на града, засаждаме медоносни дравчета и растения и по този начин насочваме вниманието към градинарство и обогатяване на флората в полза на пчелите. Проведени бяха кампании за вредата от пестицидите и намаляване на тяхната употреба. Казвам се Евгения Тренчева и съм директор на начално училище Свети Пейси Хилендарски. Тази година имахме удоволствието да бъдем включени като партньори в проектът, организиран от Община Банско, свързан с пчелите. Тръгнахме с идеята, че е много важно децата от най-малки да бъдат запознати с тези представители на природата, които имат изключително голямо значение за нашия живот. Учители, родители, деца направиха интересни макети, участваха в различни мероприятия, които допринесоха за опознаване живота на пчелата и самите деца разбраха колко важно е да ги пазим. Казвам се доктор Енчо Костадинов Чубанов и съм председател на Пчеларско дружество Рой. Дружество с 120 годишна история в подглеждането и опазването на пчелите. Дружеството има регистрирано над 35 активни членове, които продължават да отглеждат, въпреки трудностите, да отглеждат пчелите на територията на Община Банско. Поради намаляването на хората там, чистотата на природата, един вид се възстановява и пчелите се чувстват изключително добре. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'd like to thank Mr. Doctoro for his thoughts. The city of Bansko is one of the greener towns in Bulgaria, similar than in the Ljubljana market. You can buy a lot of natural honey there, as well as pollen and propolis. Next up, we'll be looking at the beautiful Italian city of Bergamo. It has an old city center protected by imposing walls, protected by the UNESCO World Heritage Program. So it's a UNESCO World Heritage site. And although it's located in one of the most urbanized regions in Europe, it's also deeply connected to nature. Thanks to its excellence in the fields of architecture, cuisine, and the arts, Bergamo will be next year's European capital of culture, along with Brescia. This is what its mayor, Mr. Giorgio Gori, tells us. Bergamo is firmly committed to participating in the European project BPathNet Reloaded. The project aims to become an increasingly bee-friendly city with green infrastructure that is suitable to support pollinators, but being aesthetically so, well, um, remaining beautiful and functional from an ecosystem perspective. In addition to being a UNESCO heritage site uh, for, uh, for gastronomy, locally produced honey is of great value to us. Now, I'd like to invite our next speaker. Okay, thank you for giving me words and to, for letting me tell you about um, how in Bergamo this all uh, went on. As Adele said before, um, Urbac has not told us what to do. We have decided together with a set of stakeholders what to do together. And in Bergamo particularly, there were a lot of people joining in, more than what we expected. So we've been uh, working. Um, what happened in Bergamo? Um, basically, I would say that we developed a project with uh, two different components. There was an internal component, um, which uh, um, had to do with uh, us stimulating. We are I mean, in the part of the municipality, of course, and we are uh, working in, a, in the botanic garden, which is owned by the municipality. And our job was on the internal side was to stimulate reflections around interesting topics that uh, um, made people working inside the municipality in different offices work together. 
So it, it was a, the first, maybe not the first, but a very good example of uh, collaboration with different offices for a common goal. Uh, on, on an external component, uh, we, we acted provoking and igniting, I would say, a movement of thought uh, within the population and with the stakeholders that were involved. Uh, um, that probably allowed us to do many actions that we wouldn't have done if we were on our own. Um, another um, particular feature, feature of our project is that the Botanic Garden was involved. And as you know, a Botanic Garden is uh, a museum, a cultural institution, which is devoted to communicating. And it is also studying, is it researching, is connecting research, the world of research and people. So that was uh, probably a good um, a good solution for a project like this because we had contents to deliver and we had a perfect structure to deliver them. So we would suggest for the future that more botanic gardens are involved uh, in uh, such projects. Another topic that we would like to, another feature that we would like to underline uh, concerning the Patmet Reloaded in Bergamo is that uh, with this project, we really felt uh, that there was an opportunity for us to learn from others because no one invents anything. We just uh, copied, as you do at school if you're smart. Uh, we, we, we really had a, an excellent uh, example in Ljubljana, but we also learned from other cities. And we did something that we wouldn't probably be able to deliver if we were on our own. So this is a list of the actions. I won't go through all of it because it would take me ages. Um, but I will just want to say that it's been done by people. It's not a project that came from above. It's really something that started from the bottom. And that's why it probably went so far. Every day, every week, well, not every day, but really very, very often, we are asked about uh, from, from people about the possibility to join in, even now that they know it's gonna, well, sort of come to an, not an end, but uh, the end of this first phase. So it was really uh, interesting to us. And even if we have already taken part to other projects, uh, in this case, it, we really felt uh, that the possibility to go on further beyond the end of the project is really uh, close to us. We, we can really do it. We sort of tried to split the, to group, not to split, to group the actions into two areas, which were within our reach possibilities. We are, as I said, a botanic garden, and we could drive, sort of drive the process, the project and the process through these two dimensions, cultural actions and biodiversity actions. As you see, biodiversity actions are less than cultural ones. Uh, that's because the time span probably was not long enough, but we really did something. I'll show you maybe in a, in a minute. There are some actions that are both cultural and about biodiversity. For example, now we are running this bee hotel contest, which uh, will help us find the best idea for the more sustainable, um, beautiful and uh, effective bee hotels to be um, planned and designed by designers and carpenters. And then we will give the best project to schools of carpentry in Bergamo to disseminate and to fill the city with uh, um, houses for, uh, for, for, for uh, other insects, uh, for pollinators. So just a few of the, of the actions we carried on. Uh, the first one is about gastronomy because Bergamo doesn't have this potential um, as Ljubljana has to produce a lot of honey. Uh, we decided that we would uh, um, dedicate our efforts to uh, give value to the, to the honey, to the amount of honey we can produce. And we tried to link honey to another product, which is very 
interesting and uh, yes, on, in the mouth of everybody in Bergamo, which is cheese. So we prepared a description of seven cheeses and seven honeys, has seven different honeys. And it was really fun to match them to, um, to produce uh, something that could be uh, shared with everybody in the city. Um, uh, for example, with the restaurants, we even used it in on our uh, touristic bee path. And it's a brochure, a simple leaflet with words. Words are magic. Uh, they can tell people and they can teach uh, and they can uh, promote a different way of thinking of our uh, resources like honey and bees. Another thing that we, de we did is another brochure, again, paper, well, it's not paper, it's not printed because it's not eco-friendly, we are sharing it online, but yet, uh, can you see how many logos are uh, be below the, the picture? It's because a lot of institutions, well, not a lot, but eight institutions, and it never happened before in Bergamo, our work, they, they, they are all dealing with education, but they grouped, came together to produce, um, how would this, you describe it as a package, a modular package of activities that we already did. No one invented anything. We just tried to go together and uh, point at, um, at, 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 at a name that we all share. So we're all working, telling things about uh, around bees. Uh, and it's not only the Botanic Garden, it's also, the art museum, which discovered they can say something about bees uh, and they can teach it. So it was a way to reinvent our uh, ordinary activity. Uh, these are the interpretive signs we thought. Uh, we've been planning them within the Botanic Garden. Gabriele did a lot of it. And here is how they will work. We will put them in every meadow within the city. Here, as well, as you see, there are many logos as well. And um, we feel like that having so many logos will help people and institutions feel empowered, have, uh, have, uh, have the feeling that they have something to say about this topic. We like them very much. If you like them, we're sharing, mm, they are free. Uh, we try not to use too many words. They are interpretive signs. So we don't want to tell people what they have to do. We want to spread messages. So here they are. If you want, just call us. We did something about flowery meadows. We tested different combinations of seeds and different ways of growing them. And it was a disaster because of the summer. So negative results in science are results. So we've got a lot to do. Um, we, we've been working with mosquitoes because, uh, you know, mosquitoes are a problem in our cities, uh, but we were able, this is, I, I think this was a great success. Gabriele thinks we could do, do better, but we were able to have to, to convince the municipality offices. We worked together. This was a very good example. We convinced uh, to lower the amount of uh, treatments uh, for against uh, mosquito um, adults. And we were able to promote uh, larvae, larval uh, treatments, which are less dangerous, less uh, uh, yes, less negative than the ones for adults. What we're going to do, we want to go on, of course. Next year, Bergamo is twinning with Brescia and, and for the Italian capital of culture. And we are thinking of uh, directing the actions of uh, uh, Be Partner Reloaded into that flow. So we are already planning on that. We are we contacted uh, Brescia's friends. They are really great, already doing great job on that. And so we matched with them. Um, we are already into urban beekeeping, but we would like to promote it a little bit. We really need to uh, deal with biodiversity because without that, uh, um, there won't be any urban beekeeping, no cheese, no honey, no nothing and ecosystem services and green infrastructures. As I told you before, Bergamo is in the middle of one of the most urbanized areas of Europe with uh, um, 
not a lot of infra green infrastructures. So we need to feed the people and we need to feed bees. So we will invest on that um, furthermore. Please contact us, we're there, ortobotanico at comune.bergamo.it. Thank you very much. And now we're going to Croatia, to a charming city on the Drava River, the fourth largest city in Croatia that is also called Osijek, uh, that is also called a uh, mini Vienna, and that is Osijek. Osijek used to be considered the most well-kept city in our former um, common country, Yugoslavia. And today, in addition to its traditional passion for football, Osijek is also a city of urban beekeeping and its inhabitants are particularly proud of the fact that the city has 17 parks and 394,000 square meters of green space. We have a message by President of the City Council, Mr. Vladimir Ham, that says the following. We all want to learn from Ljubljana and of course to encourage Croatia to change the legal rules on urban keeping. That's why celebrating World Bee Day was more than just enjoying fun activities for us. We wanted to draw attention to the problem of Croatia's restrictive regulations because, as we know, it is forbidden in Croatia to keep bees in cities, even though we have some excellent examples in Europe where apiaries are kept in the very centers of big cities, like in Ljubljana, for example, or our twin city of uh, Fordsheim. However, today with us, is the representatives of uh, Mr. Helena, and please, the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Helena Kolenic, and uh, I'm here now to represent the municipality of Osijek, Croatia. I actually work for the cultural center uh, of Osijek, which is uh, founded by the municipality, the, the city of Osijek. And um, maybe it sounds a bit of um, unusual for a cultural worker to, to uh, be involved in such a project, but I will... Um, um, now show you how we did it and um, what our motivation was and uh, what we started with. So um, first of all, I wanted you to know uh, something about our city. So it is positioned on the eastern part of Croatia. And as you can see, it's really, really far away from the, the coastline. It's far away from, uh, it's 300 kilometers from the capital uh, Zagreb. So um, we uh, don't have such a great position. I mean, we are the fourth biggest city uh, in Croatia with just over 100,000 inhabitants, um, but we tend to be kind of jealous of uh, our capital and the coastline because we are uh, the least economically developed region. Uh, what I want you to know about our city uh, is some funny facts actually, because um, not only uh, if you if you want to visit uh, my city, you will have to be prepared to um, go home with at least three kilograms more than you came with, <laughs> because uh, we are really hospitable. We really like food. We really uh, like uh, hedonism. Uh, and another thing, and what is really important for this project, is that um, we really like to complain. And <laughs> we really like to see the negative sides of, st of uh, stories and we uh, like to be prepared for the worst case scenario. So when we started this project, I was really, um, I remember the kickoff meetings with uh, Clemen and uh, all the team and Marushka. And I was like, oh, how will I introduce to my municipality to work with beekeepers and 
a project about bees. You know, we have a, a high unemployment rate. Uh, we have, uh, um, we are still reminiscing the, the homeland war. I mean, we, we are an agricultural region, yes. I mean, it's, it's a good side, but then it is really, really hard to introduce some new ideas uh, to our uh, city. So um, what I started with actually, as somebody who is not an environmental expert, so I didn't know uh, much about bees, I didn't know much about uh, the whole story. But I started working with, um, first I called uh, the Beekeepers Association. I, I, I wanted to see where we stand. And then I realized, I mean, I've lived there for almost my whole life and I didn't even know that Osijek is actually um, the cradle of beekeeping in Croatia because it has the first beekeeping uh, association in this part of Europe, actually. And we didn't learn this in schools. We didn't have, any signage in a city. I mean, it's something that is not widely known. Um, and the beekeeping association, they, they said like, we really want to um, express this. We really want to uh, make everybody know that we are the, the cradle of beekeeping in Croatia, not only in Croatia, it, it's a much uh, wider story. And uh, we started with this. So uh, here's uh, Mr. Bogdan Penic. Uh, he uh, actually started this associ association Pcella, which, which means bee in Croatian, really innovative. And, <laughs> and uh, it was in year uh, 1879. So it's been around for a long time and the association is still going on and they still uh, issue their magazine on, in one annually. So um, we really worked with low awareness of um, green topics, with low awareness of Osijek being the, the cradle of beekeeping in Croatia. So I knew that we had much to do and I knew that we have many potentials. So um, we actually um, have a really, really um, regulated, if not almost impossible, um, it, national regulations on urban beekeeping are so strict that there actually are maybe two or three places where we can put beehives in our city, in urban area. And uh, one of them is actually the building of the Faculty of Agrobiotechnical Sciences. And within this uh, time frame of 18 months, um, they have managed to put and operate a, bee, a, a beehive on the rooftop. So it is actually one of the first uh, urban beehives in uh, Croatia. We do have many parks. As, uh, um, as the uh, moderator said, we have 17 uh, city parks, but most of them are actually kind of, uh, you know, uh, green deserts, as Dr. Hatina said, um, because our mayor and our municipality likes the uh, low cut grass and everything has to be neat and tidy. So we, we really um, want this kind of tidy look of our city and the citizens like that. So introducing the, um, the late mowing and stuff, it's, it's, it was really hard, but we did some of the activities as well. Uh, as you can see those flower on the, um, on this little square, uh, it's actually brand new. It never existed before in this uh, in this area. It was all just grass, and we managed to uh, convince some of the municipal companies uh, to actually plant the milliferous flowers on the city squares. We had many activities uh, for uh, awareness raising. Uh, we had uh, public events. Uh, it was within this project, we had the first World Bee Day. We've never celebrated it before. Uh, we managed to get uh, schools uh, into the project. Uh, and uh, I, uh, to come back to the beginning of the story, when I said we like to complain, I really didn't think that it would get this far. I mean, I thought that when I have the first ULG meeting, I will just like speak from like this and they will, they will nod and say, yeah, yeah, it's not gonna happen. I really, I really thought that. I mean, but actually with the synergy and everything, we actually managed to um, overcome the results that I expected. 
uh, we really focused on education because uh, we uh, really had low awareness of, um, of bees and wild pollinators in general. And uh, actually, I was really surprised with the interest of schools and kindergartens because we managed to um, have more than 30 uh, programs in schools actually uh, during this uh, 18 months. Oh, here are some um, photos of some um, schools that are doing a project. And what I really uh, was glad to see is that they don't need me anymore as a ULG coordinator. They really don't. Schools call the faculty, they arrange uh, some kind of um, meeting or some kind of um, lecture, and they are all the, the ULG members uh, work together and they create their own stories. Um, as I already said, uh, the, the visual uh, part of our cities has really changed in the last, um, I can say, 12 months, because uh, we have now the priority to put more mellifluous plants, more flowers, uh, more food for wild pollinators, and it is something that has never been talked about uh, before this project. We also have the bee swarming service uh, that actually existed before this project, but now we, with the public campaigns and with uh, media, we uh, managed to spread the word that there is an option for citizens if they see a bee swarm uh, that they can call this uh, service and they will, uh, they will come and pick the swarm for free. Uh, these are actually uh, some photos. I don't know if you can see well, but uh, our city became uh, more um, more colorful and with a lot uh, more flowers than before, which is actually pretty good. And one of the key um, successes uh, that I think that we managed to uh, achieve within this project is this great collaboration. I mean, I've never seen... Um, 40 people uh, working so well together uh, before, uh, before this project. When I started it, uh, it was funny because um, we had three major beekeeping associations in Osijek and they all hated each other. So, <laughs> and they were like calling me, no, don't ask them about this topic. It's my topic. No, don't ask them. But now they sit together and they drink coffee and then they talk about the, the project results, which I think is really great. So we had uh, five elementary schools, kindergartens, uh, secondary schools. Uh, we also have this um, program for adults, the beekeeping progr program uh, that lasts for one year. And then when you finish the program, you get a diploma and you're a certified uh, beekeeper. And uh, we actually, um, not only the faculties and the educational part, but we also managed to um, be in contact with the municipal companies, uh, with uh, city fair and so on. Uh, this is actually a map of our uh, ULG, uh, it, uh, not ULG, our BPAD, I'm sorry, the, the, the terms of uh, Urbax is uh, now reached a peak in my head. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, we have seven points. Um, they're all in the city center uh, around the, the old city and they are, it is a walkable tour. And since we are not a touristic city, since we're not on the coast, coastline, um, we think this tour will be more educational and we already have schools uh, touring on this uh, bee path and the children really like it. So um, wh uh, why do I name this presentation the new cradle of urban beekeeping? Because it's actually kind of uh, paradoxical um, because we reinvented our history. I mean, we just took what we had and made the best of it. And uh, that's why I think by being pioneers kind of uh, in, uh, in Croatia with uh, urban beekeeping, which is, as I said, uh, strictly regulated, we can uh, brand our city as uh, more green, more bee friendly, um, and slowly start to develop in a more green, more modern, more European way. 
wild pollinators are still more of a topic than bees because we cannot put bees uh, in uh, the city area but i think it's a great start i think we made a great progress and we assured some preconditions for development of uh, urban beekeeping in our cities so that's it and thank you i'm really glad to be here today Thank you, Helena Kulinic, for this lovely presentation. I wish you the best of luck in the future as you are building uh, the foundations for uh, the future of beekeeping in Osijek. Now we are moving on with the Polish city of Sosnowiec. Similar than Pchela or B, which is not a very innovative name, they have uh, the word Pchola, I think, that means a bee in Polish. Pshola. Pshola. Anyway, so Snowviak has a very nice sounding name. I found somewhere the information that it derives from the word for pine, Sosna. Only a step, only a small distance uh, divides uh, a bee. Uh, and a pine. Anyway, this is the capital of the district adjacent to Katowice, and it's a mining and an industrial region, one of the largest cities in the Silesian Voivodeship and the Upper Silesian Industrial Area. Today, it's transforming into a people and bee friendly city. It's also known as a city of four cultures, where there are many reminders of the times when the city was developed by Evangelicals, Jews, the Orthodox and Catholics. And another um, excerpt or a quote by uh, the mayor of the city, Mr. Akadius Czeczynski. Sosnowiec, from pine forest to modern metropolis. How can we change the lives of our citizens by changing the city? Our goal is having a green, friendly and sustainable city. People's needs are changing and so are our actions. Ecology and leisure in the city are very important to us. We have built new parks and restored the lost splendor of old parks. We have planted thousands of trees and tens of thousands of shrubs. We've also built insect hotels, bat boxes and bird nesting boxes. Our parks have become home to many bee colonies. Developing urban beekeeping is one of our objectives and we encourage local institutions to set up their own apiaries. We hope that the number of urban apiaries will increase in the coming months. Now I'd like to invite the representative of the city of Sosnowiec, Ms. Edita Vikurs, to take the floor. Is it pronounced like this? Anyway, about bees for dummies. Welcome. My name is Edita Vekush, I represent the city of Sosnowiec, I'm the project coordinator and within the next 10 minutes I would like to brag about our achievements <laughs> because I think we did a lot, uh, but I would like also to make this presentation a link with the next panel with the afternoon because I would like also to encourage other cities that are, have no tradition with urban beekeeping that have no knowledge about bees like we did at the beginning um, that, um, and tell them that if we managed to transfer the good practice, anybody can. <laughs> and I also think that my presentation will be a little bit of answer to at least to your question, because our city is, has only 200,000 residents, but we are a part of metropolitan area of Zagłębie and Upper Silesia. So altogether we have over 2 million residents. Um, so we have the challenges of a big city um, and how to transfer to the good practice. Well. My advice would be just get your feet wet, <laughs> start doing something, and this is um, what you can achieve. Oh, it worked. <laughs> I called it a beast for dummies, not calling you dummies, but us. <laughs> um, at the beginning, we honestly knew nothing about bees. We had uh, no tradition of urban beekeeping. So when we came, we came here a year ago, in September last year, to Ludlana, and we heard what we have to do 
<laughs> well, <laughs> it wasn't an easy task. As you can see, the list of things we had to do was very long and it all sounds Greek to us. Sorry, Fatima, it did. Uh, but um, a year later, if you can see at our progress table, we not only successfully transferred all the modules, but we also added some new things because after a few months, we decided, hmm, Clement, our lead expert, always call us overachiever. Let's prove it, we are. So um, now in October of 2022, we can do the Homer Simpson stunt because uh, the job is already done. And I think there is a good um, possibility to, to expand the, our BPATH, um, the team, not only us, the three of us who are here, but also our ULG members and people, all the stakeholders back home, they work perfectly. And I think um, this project will continue. So um, I will tell you only about a few of our achievements because it will take me a few hours <laughs> to go through all of it. Um, the first thing that we had to do was to transfer the BPATH as a tourist um, attraction. Well, we are not a tourist place. We're not a tourist uh, destination. If you think about, uh, if you ask a Polish tourist, what is their first thought when they think about Sosnowiec? They probably will have this image that you can see at the upper left corner, coal mines, heavy industry, bad air. So uh, we thought, okay, we have to do this as a um, tourist product. And that was our, um, oh, sorry, sentiment at the moment. We were really in a panic mode, but um, with great guidelines that we got, with the help of Marushka and Clement, who really were always there for us, we are uh, managed to find our own uh, way. So our BPF is not really for foreign tourists because we don't have that many. Um, the main uh, target group of this BPF are our residents and the residents of the whole metropolitan area and of the region, because you know how it's, it's like. Um, you go to different continents to, um, to visit other places, but you don't really know your own city. And that's how we planned it. We chose 10 locations that really show the transformation of our city from the times when we were just an area covered by dense pine trees, uh, pine forest, uh, through medieval castle, through the times of industrialization, uh, through socialism in Poland, till modern times. And all those 10 uh, places tell their own story, tell the story of our city, of our history, of our heritage, but also educate the visitors about bees, about pollinators and about biodiversity. Of course, I cannot tell you any, everything about it, but we have a QR code here if you would like to use it. Uh, there is a 10 minute long film about our VIPA on the YouTube. Please see it, you will understand what we meant with that. Another task, it was uh, developing educational programs. We came here last year and we thought, easy. We're gonna do it like in a second because we have great co cooperation with teachers. It will be very an easy thing. We came back home and our teacher said, mm -mm. not possible. The curriculum that we have, the obligatory uh, lessons that we have to do is so packed. There is no space for anything more. But the 12 months of cooperation and really pushing them and asking and um, begging <laughs> um, really paid off. And now um, we developed not only programs for kindergartens and primary schools, but also for high schools, which is very challenging because they have to take so many exams that it's especially difficult for them. And our teacher um, decided that they can use the obligatory lesson, for example, chemistry, and they can uh, make a lesson about sugars using honey as an example. So you can kind of sneak certain contents to lessons that already uh, have to had to be implemented. Something that we're very proud of are also programs for children with special needs. Um, so there is a program, you can see a, a kid with uh, glasses on, on, on his uh, head. Um, this is a virtual reality. This is what the school uses. So the kids that have um, intellectual disabilities and their educational process has to be a little different. Uh, they find different ways to approach them. So um, he has this virtual reality glasses and he's visiting a pirate at this moment. There are also uh, in the middle picture, there is our teacher, Alexandra, 
to develop the program uh, to develop um, motor skills of children using the example of pollinators so she's educating them but also uh, developing the skills that they need to to live what we think is very important is with um, education and awareness raising and promotion because our citizens in poland generally they are not very environmental <laughs> friendly <clears throat> we are famous or unfamous for it um, so we uh, developed a few um public events our target was as we uh, were supposed to do in an application 50 participants so uh, at the world be day when we reached 500 we stopped counting so it was a huge turnout and what, what we found out was that in a city like ours, a very industrial city, um, that people have really no connections with farming, urban beekeeping, biodiversity means a small park next to their house, they're really interested in it. So if you um, invite them to participate in an event that is really um, um, attractive, both visually and contents wise they really want to participate and all those uh, things that of those names of the events like let's wake up bees on the first day of um spring world be day honey harvest christmas fair it all will be continued uh also next year and the following years as annual cultural uh, events organized in our city new product <laughs> do you remember marushka when i came away <laughs> We, uh, we have to skip it, but we said it's obligatory. Uh, so a year ago, we thought like, what can we, uh, what can become our uh, new product? Well, can we paint coal in orange? <laughs> uh, can we put bad air into a crystal bottles? Because that's what we could do. But actually we find out that um, our ULG members were so keen on participating in the project that they're starting um, setting up their own apiaries. We have few like um, apiaries, um, municipal apiaries. One is on the terrace of the museum, one is on the roof of the theater, and one is also um, was established on the World Bee Day by the Special Economic Zone. They all produce honey that is being sold. Uh, Clement says it's good. <laughs> And we have restaurants, local restaurants that decided to buy that honey and um, create new dishes, put them on their menu. And now you can actually go to a restaurant and have uh, a dish that uh, one of the ingredients is a local honey in Sosnowiec, really, it's true. <laughs> we also think that uh, our public events, because we were so, so, so successful, uh, we could call them our new product, because this is something that's attracting not only residents of Sosnowiec, but also from the neighboring uh, towns. Another thing that was, we're not actually asked to do, it was um, uh, establishment of the occasional polygon. A year ago, we said, no, this is definitely not going to happen. But then a few months later, when we just started getting more and more involved, um, we developed it with the great uh, help of Urbacht. Thank you very much, because if you see this huge B model, this is our equipment. It's probably one of the most popular uh, places now in Sosnowiec for kids. Everybody wants to see it. So thank you very much for your generosity. Um, lots of uh, workshops, educational workshops are organized there, not only for children, but also for adults. So it's really a big hit. The last thing I want to tell you that even transfer meeting was a big uh, challenge for us because we, Search the net before we went anywhere else. We saw those beautiful uh, places, Bergamo, Bainz, you know, tourist uh, destinations. And we thought, damn, we don't even have a good postcard. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to organize a good transfer meeting? But I think that the good friendship that we had, <laughs> the great atmosphere, look at those smiley faces. And you see the bee, how um, popular it is. Everybody likes our Urbacht bee. <laughs> Um, and what's next? Just one sentence. Uh, this project will not die, it will continue. We plan to uh, develop another uh, path that will be uh, dedicated to Professor Schaffer, a botanist born in Poland, in Sosnowiec actually, um, that will be a complementary. It will be another tool to uh, enrich uh, the B path. We have another uh, group of friends of the B path, so great destinations, especially dedicated to biodiversity that people can see and expand their knowledge. We will continue the awareness rising uh, events and we also plan to um, implement the educational programs on the full scale.
And I would like to take the opportunity to thank my team because it's always me who's standing in the front of you. So they are here with me, Eva, the ladybug, <laughs> with our financial officer, and Barbara with the BHEAD. She is the ULG coordinator. So um, this is my team's achievement. I hope you, you liked uh, what we did with this project. We didn't waste the 12 months. So, and we also hope it's not the end of the, our cooperation with you guys and with Wormack. So we're looking forward to continuation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Edita V. Kursh, for this interesting presentation and Barbara said that visiting the bee path uh, in Sosnowitz is a real adventure. There are magnificent historic buildings and modern insects hotels, stories from nature and interesting city stories, green parks and colorful flowering meadows and so on and so on. You can't get, a, get bored. The BPAT Net Reloaded project has spectacularly enriched the urban jungle of Sosnowitz. So how to transfer the good practice of Ljubljana's BPAT to even more European cities and urban communities? There are several guidelines, detailed, and illustrative, and let me briefly introduce them to you. The nine very diverse EU cities where we have successfully transferred the good practice of the Ljubljana bee path have almost all the climatic conditions for beekeeping and different types of bees, but they also are characterized by different public perceptions of bees. The extremely diverse but excellent results in partner cities confirm the transferability of the good practice of the bee path. To help transfer the practice to other cities, the patterns the partners have developed three main tools, a complete set of guidelines, um, then a pocket version of the guidelines and a library of thematic newsletters. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. It should be noticed that all the tools and inspiration sources are the result of the BPathNet and BPathNet Reloaded project that you can find at eurobanked.eu slash bees. First that you can do is you can uh, download a shorter version of the full guidelines that was developed in 2020 in close cooperation with the first five partners of the cities with uh, the B path cities. And then with this short version, we want to encourage cities to read also the longer version, which is available as well. The complete guidelines steps on the way to a bee-friendly city describe the process of transferring the bee path network and it also includes detailed guidance on the development of urban beekeeping and is available only in English. And last but not least, there is a library of uh, thematic newsletters. This is a spot on project with uh, newsletters on biodiversity, education, awareness raising, tourism, World Bee Day, Bee Paths uh, in Twin Cities and so on. The newsletters feature articles supported by scientific papers, which we call the bright bee or the smart bee. Um, you can find inspiring stories from the Twin Cities about meetings, promotion, work and expanding uh, each other's projects. The newsletter is enriched with sweet and engaging short stories and with uh, fun facts about bees. To reach out to the local population, the newsletter was translated into all the languages of the Twin Cities, into Bulgarian, Croatian, English, Greek, Hungarian, Italian, Polish, Portuguese and Slovenian. So join our growing movement of bee-friendly cities in Europe and become a city with a bee path. And this takes me to Ms. Branka Trčak from the city of Ljubljana, who will tell us more about the recent developments of Ljubljana's bee path. Thank you for giving me the floor. Hello, everyone.
So today we've already heard a lot about uh, the developments of beekeeping in Ljubljana. To illustrate, here are some activities that have been going on in the previous years. Marushka already told us uh, some details about that, but you can also have a look at the posters that are part of the exhibition in the City Hall. These success stories shown here are also part of the guidelines that Tanya referred to just now. You can also see uh, these examples in the uh, pocket guidelines which, ha which, has, which have just been printed. So what's new on Ljubljana's bee path? Over the recent two years, there have been some um, new developments which I'd like to tell you more about. As the speakers before me said, we cannot do anything without people. They are the key partners in this Pro in, in this project. A bee path can only survive if we are all active, if we all give and take. In the last year and this year together we have gained four new members so that we now have a total of 44 members. Last year on the southern slope of the Ljubljana Castle Hill an apiary was built. It's a replica of, of an apiary designed by Slovenian architect Jozef Plechnik in the 1930s. The original apiary is um, in the Czech residence of uh, the first president Tomáš Masaryk. And this is now also a part of our B path. What about the transfers of good practice? This is happening all the time at a micro level. We are having one-on-one -on -one conversations on conversations in small groups. Uh, an important example was a visit from the municipality of Maribor. So the representatives came to Ljubljana. They had a walk along our B path. We had a look at some points of interest, and I think that this meeting has been very productive. Now, about the B path and about our practice, we have raised awareness about this also um, in other continents, for example, in Buenos Aires. There were also representatives from the Italian national television. They've come to Slovenia and have learned about our bee path. In the picture, you can see the, the representative of, uh, of uh, our boss, Goras, the head of rural development at the city of Ljubljana. He has met with His Excellency Hiromichi Matsushima, the ambassador of Japan to Slovenia and he gave him um, a gift from the first partnership. As Marushka already said, May in Ljubljana has traditionally been a month dedicated to bees. It has been busy, as I could say. So, in brief, there are various activities that are supplemented by activities performed by our members. So, so it's not all uh, led or performed by, by the city. In the city center, we also, we always have, we always organize a marketplace day where products can be marketed and sold. We raise awareness among children and adults have an exhibition, as I already said. And last year, we also organized free guided tours along the B path. And this year, we also had these, this beautiful poster 
telling about activities related to bees in Ljubljana. Now here is the um, exhibition in the city hall. It has also been uh, supported by the A1 company and it hosted Philip Marville who uh, holds the Guinness World Record. He, he creates 3D pictures on the ground and it makes you feel like you're on a, you're walking on a meadow. And this was also part of the exhibition. The Urban Beekeepers Association of Slovenia also plays an important role. And they held an event taking pl place around the World Bee Day. Uh, it was a presentation of the book, The Year That the Bees Came. And here is a 3D B. It's the Carniolan honeybee, a Slovenian native species. This one is about 170 centimeters big, so quite impressive. Here are some other photos from our city center activities. School children are among our visitors. Now this year we also had a round table. It was dedicated to pollinators in the city. It was a kind of a workshop featuring various experts that presented several topics, including the diversities of pollinators in the city. It was presented by Dr. Danilo Beuk, similar to what we heard today. Then we heard more about the co-evolution of pollinators and plants, or rather types of flowers. And we learned that certain pollinators that have developed um, an adaptation, or, so some pollinators are adapted to, a, to specific types of flowers and therefore they pollinate certain plants more easily. So not every pollinator is best suited for every flower. Then we also talked about pollinator conservation in protected areas, also within the city, and we talked about types of renovation of biodiverse grasslands. A colleague from the Veterinary Institute work, working with bee diseases presented to us the types of diseases that bees have and also about the way that these diseases can be transferred to other pollinators. We have already heard more about that earlier today. Here is an initiative by Mr. Susinger from the Barrier Association. Uh, in the um, Shubicheva uh, High School in Ljubljana, uh, they are working on a project about climate action. They are raising awareness about this with a run. The run took place on the 19th of October this year and part of the run took place along the bee path. And this, is, this was a way that managed to bring two important topics together. AP education has flourished under the Enea Association. We will hear more about that from my colleague later on. They had various, uh, they have various projects in place. The city of Ljubljana today supported an AP pedagogical conference that took place online. online. We were an active member of this conference. At the city of Ljubljana, we are very proud that we now have 10 registered kindergartens that are uh, registered as an AP, AP preschool. Uh, we also now have a common logo or all these preschools. 
Now about late mowing, we have heard a lot about this today already. What does this mean? It means mowing late, it takes place twice a year, and it's very important for biodiversity, including the diversity of pollinators. So my, my colleague Danilo already told more about this today, so I'm repeating my colleagues, but I also have an interesting story to, sh to share. So one thing was that we managed to increase the, the green surfaces, green areas that are part of late mowing. There were some visitations, part of the BPathNet and BPathNet Reloaded. So we visited various project partners and there were results of to this as my colleague danilo or as my colleague uh, clement said today if we don't mow green areas people work will complain that we don't do anything but our hungarian friends got us the idea on how to how to make it easier that, that the people will accept this so these signs that you can see on the slide say that we will mow the lawns once the bees have have fed and this helped a lot this project was not easy to implement there were some costs because different uh, because different machines uh, different mowers needed to be bought but anyway uh, the results were great now about our events some of them took place in may but there are also some in october for example honey day this is where food producers and honey product makers can meet and sell their uh, stuff to people. We also organize various events for children, for example, uh, storytelling. Again, we raised awareness about the importance of late mowing. There were a lot of activities going on and it took place on a, a sunny Saturday morning in Ljubljana. As part of this project, we did another thing this year. We added some elements to the bee path. This that you can see here is a bee polygon. We named this the bee observatory. There will be various facilities aimed at awareness raising. They will serve um, as a place where we can observe bees and other pollinators in their natural habitat. habitat. So this is basically a bench where you can sit and look. I cannot see it very well. Um, so it, can, it cannot uh, be seen very well in this slide, but it's a kind of a, it, it's a way to show people how bees uh, see their environment. We are very proud that, of, of the fact that we are keeping in touch with our uh, old partners from the first phase. We now have new partners and expect to have many more in the years to come. I think that we have at least three uh, meetings per year. We have a cup of coffee together. Everyone tells what they do on their local bee path and we make plans for the future. So this is a very positive element. This is all I have to say. So now I'd like to give, my, give the floor to Tanya. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Branka Terchak from the city of Ljubljana for this lovely and illustrative presentation of all bee path activities and for this overview on how it all began and how it grew. Today, we are gathered here to celebrate all the good, all the beautiful and the worthwhile that has been created so far within the network of bee path cities. We are here to congratulate all the dedicated visionaries, creators, 
the many hardworking women and men who have laid the foundation for the future of BPATH across Europe over these past years. We are here to celebrate all that has been achieved and exceeded. I think we've deserved, uh, deserved a round of applause. But of course, at this point, we continue our work with the same enthusiasm and commitment. We believe that the exchange of experience and knowledge between cities that want to follow the B path towards a more sustainable and healthy city for all living beings can bear much fruit. And as we have heard today for uh, a number of times, we need to start with children in order to educate our youngest citizens about the importance of bee products and bees in the city. The municipality, the city of Ljubljana has helped prepare a specialized AP kindergarten teaching program, which was co-developed with the Department of Environmental Protection, Rural Development Section, and the Institute for the Development of Empathy and Creativity, ENEA. And now here with us is uh, Ms. Nina Ilic from the ENEA Institute in Slovenia. Thank you very much and allow me to welcome you. I'm very glad to be here among you. I have always said that all of us working with preschool children have one of the biggest responsibilities you can have in your life. Because in the preschool area, we lay the foundations for the whole life. Before I start with the um, uh, alphabet of our programs, I would like to thank Marushka, who was able to recognize the ideas, the potentials. I'd like to thank her for all the support and cooperation. I'd also like to thank Goras, Luca and Clemen for their male contribution and energy in connecting all the uh, female bees in these, this project. I would like to thank everyone who was involved. It was a very enriching experience for me. What you can see here was our starting point. Safety first. If we want to prepare educational projects for children, we must bear in mind safety, especially in an urban environment where the basic knowledge of how to coexist with nature um, are often forgotten, how to behave towards uh, uh, small animals, what is the role of uh, a human being in the natural environment and so on. In this respect, we started with uh, the codes of, with our code of conduct. You can see it's, it's hanging over there. And uh, we were happy to see that children, even very small children, uh, can remember all these uh, rules very easily. So it's very easy then to build on these foundations. We tried to reinforce the empathy um, to establish the connection with uh, the, uh, not just the connection with the environment, which uh, influences um, in a beneficial way our health, but on actual empathy, we wanted to make children understand that we should observe the environment, see what has been going on, um, not to let things just go, go by, to foresee how we can contribute to the environment. When we start looking at the environment in this way, then we can really 
remember remember things because empathy is very important for our understanding and for our action, uh, actions. In the preschool period, we develop empathy uh, by developing the uh, possibility of uh, distinguishing between differences and by raising awareness of what is our impact on the environment. This is the right slide, so let's continue. What have we, we focused on? We wanted to develop educational programs that are in line with education for sustainable development as much as possible, also with the protection of environment. And um, we wanted to focus on building a healthy society. Throughout the years, we found out that if we come together and if everyone invests their own parts, there are definitely results and effects. And it, as you could hear through uh, in other presentations, previous presentation, um, this is a shared experience by us all. This is a project that we carried out in a part of Ljubljana called Gerba. Uh, there are little gardens there and we got involved there. We were uh, mowing, uh, then uh, taking care of plants. We were removing invasive plants. This uh, grass here is only mode twice a year. And then we also focused on our target groups. Who should we educate? In fact, we didn't start with preschool children, but with all of those that we presented our, uh, uh, our project to, uh, beginning with the city of Ljubljana, that uh, needed to understand why are we doing this and what will be the uh, the effect. Then we developed the AP preschool. This year our program is moving to primary schools. We have been introducing the first AP schools and uh, in connection with that we cooperate with the Ministry of Education, Science and Sport that also supports our programs. And in the National Catalogue for Training, where uh, teachers apply for trainings uh, within our programs. We've also established cooperation with beekeepers in the city of Ljubljana. We, uh, the standards of a uh, responsible beekeeper were introduced and trainings were dedicated, dedicated to that. Um, and part of the education involved uh, cooperation with uh, preschools, primary schools and with uh, tourist organizations because we wanted that everyone to speak with the same voice um, we wanted everybody to understand how to act in certain circumstances. This is where we included beekeepers in the context of everyone who, uh, who accompanies any kind of groups. Then what I'd like to point out is maybe the fact that the AP preschool also includes AP therapy in their programs. We are pride, proud of that. And the survey that we have carried out um, revealed that this is a segment that attracts uh, children as well as teacher mo teachers the most. We developed it in uh, we developed a natural science and cultural day in cooperation with Marushka and with the city of Ljubljana. 
we have also um, connected with the uh, botanical garden that they and they offer uh, this project um, within the scope of their regular um, activities. Every year we cooperate with the city of Ljubljana and with the Ministry of Education, Science and Sports, and I'm very proud to tell you that in Ljubljana, Twenty kinder kindergartens from all over Slovenia uh, is included in the project with um, with more than a thousand children, and the number has been growing. We've developed. Um, further modules for those who already know something and would like to upgrade their knowledge or would like to uh, have uh, new activities. As regards our seminaries and workshops, we always organize them uh, together with the Beekeepers Association in Slovenia. This year, they, they donated a spray uh, to AP Gardens with um, nurturing properties. So as I've mentioned already, we developed education for beekeepers and tourist guides as well. This is Marushka and me at a fair. Uh, that we attended last year. And thank you to the, the um, team from the Hungary uh, for their for the, uh, comic book. I borrowed this picture from there. And why it is necessary to uh, speak with the same voice and have the same idea uh, with beekeepers and uh, the tourist guides, why it is important that we have the same approach, because it is important to know what is our legal liability in case of any uh, health related problems of our participants. Also, to learn how to safely bring a group uh, to the beehives and uh, uh, then what to, how to act in case um, of any health related issues, then to understand what is the difference between a group of children and a group, group of grown ups, what are the different challenges and what should we pay attention to and last but not least, the etiquette of good behavior. To conclude with, I'd like to say that we look forward to the month ahead of us because an international net of AP uh, preschools and primary schools is being established. It will offer um, expert support, administrative support, pos the possibility of uh, project cooperation and exchange of experience. And we will invite you all to participate. I would also like to thank all of you who are present here.